Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm Michael, waving over from Germany, um, this time virtually. Um, and today I want to dive into practical Kubernetes monitoring with Prometheus with you in the next few minutes. Um, before we uh, continue, before we start, um, you can reach out to me um, as DNS Michi on, on social media. This is DNS M-I-C-H-I. Um, and without further ado, let's jump into action. Um, when it comes to monitoring, uh, we probably need to first start understand well, we need to change from the traditional host and service uh, objects monitoring. We had state-based monitoring with Nagios back then um, with more like metric names, tags, volatile container names coming up and other similarities and needed to understand well, microservices and distributed systems need a new approach in monitoring. And this is where we want to dive into today. Like say, okay, we have Kubernetes, we have containers, microservices, and how we can we monitor that? Changing um, the ideas, changing the knowledge is oftentimes hard, but here are a few tips of saying, well, we have microservices in containers which can run, run anywhere in the cluster. So you actually don't know the IP address. You cannot really say, well, it, it has a host name which I can ping and say it's okay. Um, the other thing is a business process model doesn't work with saying, hey, two out of three replica sets uh, means that the state is still okay because this is um, different similar to how Kubernetes detects the health state and might be repairing the health state or even um, add more resources to the pools in order to ensure that the application is running. Um, because sometimes the service might remain broken from the outside and in the next second it, it's already fixed again. And in a traditional monitoring system, this could be meant flapping between states um, and generate alerts, which is not something which is applicable to uh, Kubernetes and microservices. Similar to mapping states like, like OK, warning, critical, um, they don't necessarily fit Kubernetes objects and inside the cluster. So forget forget everything you know about this when approaching uh, Kubernetes monitoring and focus on metrics, logs, and, and everything else, which is highly dynamic. Now, where should we, we be starting our monitoring journey? Should we be running Prometheus inside the cluster or outside the cluster? What, what is needed? Because, well, if the Kubernetes cluster goes down and Kubernetes is running inside, we don't have any monitoring. Um, the thing is, um, when we need to do external monitoring, we might be to need uh, we we might need to open up the APIs um, if we don't have any sidecars. And there is a potential for security problems because we also expose certain root access and other things which are not really made by design. The design is to say, hey, I want to run Prometheus in the Kubernetes cluster, um, use security policies which are in there, communicate with specific uh, API servers and other things, and follow the best practices with regards to permissions. Um, if I need external monitoring, I can install ping probes to monitor the monitor, which I need to do with a traditional monitoring system already. Now, if we dive into Prometheus and say, hey, what is that? What well, you probably know it already, but how can we approach this or combine this with Kubernetes monitoring? And getting the big, bigger picture is like Prometheus scrapes um, uh, endpoints or HTTP, HTTP endpoints um, and collects the metrics from there. So at a certain point, we need to define the Prometheus targets. And one thing uh, which comes into play with Kubernetes is to have service discovery, which um, uh, Prometheus um, s discovers the targets in Prometheus, uh, in, in Kubernetes, sorry, um, using the file service discovery, for example, and then uh, automatically adds the scrape targets to the monitoring, posts them in, in a in, a, in, a, in an interval and everything is fine. Um, with all the collected data, we of course need to define alert rules for um, sending notifications and alerts and also query the data with PromQL from the Prometheus Web UI, from Grafana, from specific other API clients in that regard. Now, when it comes to querying data, keep in mind PromQL, um, keep practicing that, this because this really comes in handy with 
um, learning Kubernetes monitoring um, specifically, knowing the basics and also using, for example, Promlands as a, as a tool to test the queries. Now, the other thing I mentioned is service discovery, and this is like um, really using a dynamic list of targets, which Prometheus can then add to the monitoring. This is something to keep in mind um, to understand how this works with Kubernetes and Prometheus. Um, but let's get into action and say, well, we want to monitor um, Kubernetes and what is needed to actually do that. And this is where the Prometheus operator and specifically Kube Prometheus comes into play, which allows to install um, an entire package or the components in a, in a package, which you would otherwise install manually by using the operator, by using help charts and so on. So Kube Prometheus provides um, the Prometheus or uses the Prometheus operator to install Prometheus in a high availability setup next to the alert manager, next to node exporters. Um, it also adds a Prometheus adapter for the Kubernetes metrics API. Um, so you don't need the metrics server anymore. Um, you also get cube state metrics pre-installed. We will see in a bit um, what is what it does, and Grafana to have uh, dashboards and um, views available. In in addition to that, and this is the icing on the cake, we get pre-configured cluster monitoring for for Kubernetes, meaning to say we have um, Grafana dashboards and also alerting mixins pre-installed and can actually make use of that and have the like the five minute success of I'm deploying the Prometheus operator or Kube Prometheus and I can start playing, I can start investigating what's going on in my Kubernetes cluster. In addition to that. Um, the uh, uh, Kube Prometheus uh, allows us to dynamically create service discovery objects, which is helpful for deploying own applications and adding dynamically um, the application endpoints or the target endpoints for application slash metrics, for example. Now, the installation is pretty straightforward. You just follow the documentation, apply um, the uh, uh, manifest and wait a bit, and then basically everything is fine. Um, in order to familiarize yourself with the deployment, the first step is to add port forwarding um, to have the ports available um, for production environment, use an ingress controller like Nginx or something else um, in order to expose the HTTP frontends. Um, one of the frontends is the Prometheus UI itself, which you can use for basic queries, um, visualizing uh, the charts and so on. So basically testing and inspecting what Prometheus is doing um, for more advanced uh, user interfaces and dashboards and panels and so on. Um, you get Grafana uh, pre-installed, which, which comes with the default password and so on. And last but not least, we also get the alert manager UI uh, for that very reason and can start or when, when we trigger an alert, we can um, investigate the alert manager UI. Now, when it comes to specifically monitoring Kubernetes with Prometheus, we want to have something available. And the great thing is Kube Prometheus provides a long list of Grafana dashboards, which we can inspect and, and, and see what is going on. For example, the Kubernetes API server, um, the compute resources in the cluster, we can access the kubelet, we can get the Prometheus overview, so seeing the health of the monitor actually. And many, many more things which come by default, which come out of the box. Like this is actually like a, a production view already on the Kubernetes cluster itself. So oftentimes it's wise to just use that as a production view and then learn from the queries and from the panels um, to create your own uh, dashboards and panels in Grafana to uh, monitor the Kubernetes cluster even, even further. Now, the other thing which comes to mind is, well, if I deploy my own application into the cluster, I also want to monitor it. And this example is um, a fork from the Prometheus demo service from Julius Waltz, um, which basically exposes some synthet synthetic metrics. And in order to deploy it, by uh, using uh, the deployment and service resources, we can actually like run it into the Kubernetes cluster and um, 
later on start monitoring it. So I would totally encourage you to try it out later on, deploy it into the Kubernetes cluster, and then monitor the demo service, which basically means we need to create a new C uh, custom resource definition called service monitor and um, make uh, Prometheus aware that there's something new, a new service discovered to uh, in, in that regard and um, ensure that it takes up the metrics endpoints, uh, metrics endpoint and uh, starts monitoring it. Since there were three replica sets defined, um, we can see two of, two of them already up as a scrape target and one of them is still unknown, um, which means that at a, at a later point we have three targets available and based on that um, you can go ahead and um, create a new uh, Grafana dashboard or panel, um, selected a Prometheus data source, search for a specific CPU metric for example and then uh, use a prompt curl query in order to fetch the data and visualize the graph. The other thing which you get out of the box with uh, Kube Prometheus is container metrics. So the kubelets provide an embedded C advisor exporter, which comes at the um, endpoint slash metrics slash C advisor and allows you to monitor the resource usage, specific out of memory kills and so on. Um, an example is, it looks like this. Um, so building on that and using that gives you an insight of saying, hey, there is a spike, there is something which is continuously going wrong um, in, in order to really get an insight into, for example, specific namespaces um, using too many resources. The other thing um, which we also get out of the box with Kube Promises is uh, Kube State Metrics which queries the Kubernetes API server for specific health states like the deployments, the nodes, the ports. We can query the replicas available and their status and everything is installed out of the box, which is super helpful to get an insight um, without any uh, further manual actions. Now, this is what we get as the basics. So we didn't do anything yet, or we didn't modify anything yet. This is just out of the box monitoring or out of the box. It's you install the Prometheus operator and Kube Prometheus and you have everything available. But what if we want to customize it? So um, Kube Prometheus uses JSONnet and you can develop your own rules and dashboards so you can add them. Um, you can also monitor other namespaces. And I, I tried this recently to monitor the ECC, the above one can contribute namespace in our Kubernetes cluster. Um, and this is how it looks like to create your own JSONnet file, modify it, and then generate uh, the YAML configuration and deploy that into your Kubernetes cluster again. Um, and this is like an ongoing process. You you can modify it, you can add even more things uh, to it and use Kube Promises really, really as a basis and add your customizations on top. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel all the time. The other thing around um, more advanced monitoring or what I want to bring to your attention is what else can we do with the monitoring data with the metrics collected? And one of the things in the SRE uh, handbook from, or in, in the SRE book from Google is the four golden signals of monitoring, like what is needed to immediately see what it, that something is going wrong uh, with your application. And this could be latency. This means traffic. Um, this is like errors and also saturation of the service. And oftentimes you need to think about code instrumentation. So actually modifying uh, your code and exposing the metrics for Prometheus to see the HTTP requests, um, to see anything which has been failing and so on. And you need to correlate, correlate that in order to immediately see that something is really going off. Now, if you, for example, want to dive into um, instrumenting your own applications, um, this is an example for Python, which I created a while ago for a workshop. Um, on the other side, I would encourage you to check out all the uh, Prometheus client libraries for Ruby, for Rust, for Go, for anything which comes to mind. And if it's not there, look into the existing examples how um, to really instrument your application and deploy it and have it monitored. Um, now, 
monitoring and metrics is fine, but what about alerts and escalations? As mentioned before, the Prometheus Alert Manager comes pre-installed with Cube, Cube Prometheus. We can use the Prometheus Alert rules, like prompt queries and applying a certain threshold and, and times and so on. And the Alert Manager ensures that there are no duplicated alerts, that you uh, prevent um, alerts which have been fired already. You can acknowledge and silence specific alerts for a given time. You have high availability available. The transports are email or chat systems. Everything which, which is basically known already is similar um, here already. Um, the main difference with defining the alert rules is we need um, a Prometheus rule custom resource definition which wraps uh, the Prometheus rules format and ensures that um, the alerts, for example, are being deployed into the Kubernetes cluster, into the Prometheus configuration. But this seems rather straightforward and the uh, link documentation for the Prometheus operator is pretty awesome. Now, jumping into a, a related topic to alerts with SLA, SLO, and SLI, we define a, sp a specific service level agreement, which means potentially with customers 99.5% availability. Our objective is even higher, saying, hey, I want it to be 99.9% uh, .9 avail available. And for achieving that, we need certain indicators. So what is hurting our, um, our production system? What is the error budget? What indicates that? Is it errors? Is it, is it latency, saturation, and so on? So when we start thinking about this, we kind of um, need to also think about SLOs and build our alerting based on SLOs, for example. Now, SLOs, can be difficult or can be like you write a lot of code, you need to um, define the prompt curl queries um, this, and the alerting rules for the alert manager and so on. Um, so it needs a common specification. And most recently OpenSLO was formed um, to unify that or to define the specification for SLOs so that um, SLO generators like uh, Sloth, for example, always generate um, the requested format or the defined format. And um, you can also use SLO management. Pura was announced um, most recently, which allows you to grab, uh, use in a UI to manage um, SLOs for Prometheus, for example. So you don't need to go into manually copy pasting stuff in order to manage um, SLOs for Prometheus and, and also for Kubernetes then. Now, um, SLOs with Prometheus can also be used for, uh, for even more things, like not only for metrics and alert calculation, but also for quality gates. Um, when something is deployed into staging and you say, hey, if the SLO is failing in my staging environment, I want to have a quality gate, for example, with Captain, and uh, CICD is red and it fails just because um, the SLO is, has failed and I don't want to deploy any performance regressions, for example, into production and then debug it at 3 a.m. in the morning and burn out from that. So this is one thing to keep in, keep in mind. The other thing is I, I can, can really touch it. Um, I would want to like talk, talk about it for hours. Um, for gitlab.com, um, the SaaS platform, our SREs um, and infrastructure teams have also defined um, their own metrics catalog, which is something similar to JSONnet. And this also gets generated. And the great thing about generating all this uh, things is um, we generate the alerts, the dashboards, um, which allows us um, to define the key metrics, the thresholds, um, and also add description and observability tools. So when someone is on call um, and the SLO alert is being fired, they can immediately see what is going on and what is needed to fix the problem, hopefully, so that um, a, a production incident can get resolved rather quickly. Now, last but not least, um, we need to shift from just monitoring to observability, just for the reason we have metrics with Prometheus, the exporters, the sidecars. We have the applications with uh, slash metrics instrumentation and also integration outside of Kubernetes. Um, but this is probably not enough for um, running operations and SRE. 
Um, and so in that regard, we shift into, well, let's keep an eye out for logs. Maybe have a central log man management available, probably have either Elasticsearch with uh, beats, uh, sidecars and daemon sets with auto discovery and keep, sorry, Kibana as a front end or um, using a more lightweight approach with uh, Loki and, and Promptail and FluentD and, and then using Grafana as a front end. This is something you need to keep an eye out for um, and keep and make your mind about it next to metrics inside your Kubernetes cluster. The other thing I want to bring to your attention is traces, which work a little different to logs and allow you to really get distributed insights into application performance as well. Um, and for example, investigates log queries. The tools in that regard are Jaeger tracing, Grafana, Tempo and, and Open Telemetry. This is something to check out. Um, and also prof profiling, continuous profiling, providing application performance insights for developers and defining the four pillars of observability in the future. Um, last but not least, secure monitoring um, is a hot topic, is needed. So you pro potentially have thought around automation and inf infrastructure as code and GitOps, like using the Prometheus operator and Kube Prometheus, extending it, customizing it with JSONnet, using um, infrastructure as code for inventory, for service discovery with Terraform, Ansible and, and the like, and deploy it continuously, practice GitOps with monitoring in your Kubernetes cluster. The other thing is like security monitoring and security means you want to detect uh, vulnerabilities before they hurt production. This not only covers like code vulnerabilities, but also container images, security, scanning with dependencies and so on. And Kubernetes security in a way of cluster image scanning, um, but also ensuring that policies are being applied like the open policy agent, Kuverno policies. And speaking of Kuverno policies, I want to bring um, the uh, Prometheus exporter and the Grafana dashboards to your attention, which allows you to immediately see what policy has been triggered, when it failed, when someone tried to circumvent it and so on, which is super helpful for production environments. Now, last but not least, getting through ideas and some thoughts. Um, maybe think about writing the data from Prometheus outside to Kubernetes, like using re re remote writes with Opstrace and the Grafana agent, as an example. Um, look into the GitLab SRE runbooks, um, how it's being done. Um, check out Open Telemetry to unify metrics, logs, and traces, and continue looking into continuous profiling. Now, the resources which I've which helped me over the past years to change from traditional monitoring to cloud native monitoring with Kubernetes with Prometheus are all linked here. Um, special thanks to Julius for Promlabs for the trainings. They are totally awesome. Um, I would encourage you to use the exercises in the slide deck to learn even more um, async and to think about what to prepare, what to instrument, what to observe and how to iterate on the specific things. So like throw in chaos engineering, think about quality gates and optimize everything which is there so you, you sleep well at night and everything is hopefully in good shape and um, your monitoring is not red. Thanks for your attention. I'm happy to answer any questions and look forward to seeing you online and hopefully soon in person again.